In this video, I'm going to take a look at fitting the sliding top on the pencil case. So before we get on to this, uh, we would mark the width of the pencil case and we would uh, pencil along the outside edge of it. So we need to plane that a little bit off. You can see here it didn't make it the whole way out to the end, so I used the ruler just to extend the line. And I'm going to use a block plane to uh, plane this off in the vise. And you can see the line very clearly there on it. So we'll work our way down to the line and when we get as far as the line, that prepares us for the next part of the marking out to fit this top. So I've got a reference point marked here as well too so as I can match it up each time. You can see that it's flush on those two sides. It's a little bit long of itself so I'm taking it up. But it's just the thickness of the saw blade past the edge there and I pencil the other side and that's going to be waste. You'll see the reason for leaving it just a little bit along the thickness of the blade first. So take it to the bench hook, make your finger, sure your finger along the side is used along the side for a guide and your thumb is a guide. Start with a steep angle and then gradually bring it back flat. And use the full length of the saw when you're cutting. So there I'm just running the sandpaper not across the grain but just on the edges to get rid of the little phrase that will be underneath that. So I can offer up my piece again with the reference point. And I want to have this flush these two sides and I'm measuring a distance of 25 and 45 and it's quite important where I've measured these from from the left hand side with a small measurement at the bottom because when I take it over to the bench hook here I want to have the cut actually on the bench hook so right along the bench hook if it was in the opposite direction it would be hanging out over the edge of the bench hook which would be no good so again 25 and 45 take it back to the bench hook and you can see the majority of it is sitting on the uh, bench hook. So I'm going to saw along that. Again finger is a guide and thumb is a guide. Use the full length of the saw when you're cutting. And I've taken the two pieces over here. Don't mix them up. So just clean in a little bit of the edge off there and you can see the cut on the piece and my reference points. So now when I push them up to the edge here, I want them in line. See everything's flush along these sides. And because the socket has been removed, you can see now why we allowed the extra thickness of the socket. Placing the piece here, I pencil two lines, which are guides to make sure if it moves, I can place it back there. And also, because I'll be gluing this, I take one pin and just through the surface into the next. You can see here, if it moves, I can adjust my piece, making sure that it's flush on the two sides, which means even, and tack the second one in. You can see now the placing of the pins as well too, not too close to any edge. Now I've driven these just a little bit far so I'm going to take them back out with the pincers. And I have the pins now that will locate where they were before. Put a little bit of glue and spread it out over evenly over the piece. My two pins locate the position. Drive them home. Put an additional two pins. And we're on to the next stage now. Um, just uh, there's a little pencil mark there that cleaned off, and a wipe with the uh, wet cloth and the excess glue that may be on that there. Offer up the uh, piece then with the, the sliding top, and we want to figure out where we're going to put the screw in this so that it will rotate. So you can see as well the grain of the wood is all running lovely in line, so it looks quite good when you have that kind of a cut where the the feature of the grain isn't broken. So these guys think that the pin or the screw goes there, but the screw that we're going to use here, a round head screw, brass, an old cabinet making type screw with a screw cup. And where we place this is very important. I've got a 4mm bit and a 3mm bit which is going to be required for this. And I need to mark the position, the location of the where the, the, the drill hole is to go. So measuring the distance of 25 and measure over 9, which is half the thickness of the wood, which is 18, and that locates where it's to go. Put the 4mm bit into the cordless drill. Just make sure that everything's flush and tight up against the joint that has been cut. Drill straight through the piece, making sure it's vertical, straight down through that. And you see that just matches the thread that's on the, uh, the screw, so it's not too big. Now the next one, the 4mm bit, 
matches the shank on the screw which doesn't have a tread I only need to go through the top piece only just the top piece not a, nothing more I'm pushing the screw through here now and I'm going to use a screwdriver on it to show that it actually rotates and this is very important for the top to work because if that was treaded every time you would open and close the lid it would actually be opening and closing the screw so it would be loosening the screw each time so I put my screw cup across here and I started it down with, into the pilot hole and the screwdriver, straight screwdriver into the straight head or slot slotted head and turn it down and you can see I've finished it with the screw going in the line or the direction of the grain and that completes the top